Hi there. Today's video is about a Coulomb counter module kindly sent in for review by IC Station. I did not pay for this module, so I marked this review as a promotion, but from my previous reviews you know you always get my unbiased opinion about a product. The module is the ZK J30, which can handle batteries from 6 to 60 volts and up to 30 amps of current. This picture is from their website. I also leave a link in the description. Installation is easy using the two sets of terminals. The left always connects to the battery, while the right connects either to the charger or the load. The idea is that the ZKJ30 sitting in between counts the charge flowing to the battery while you are charging it and decrements it when you are discharging. If set up correctly, you can see what the charge or discharge state of the battery is at any moment. Note that there isn't a separate power connection. The module takes its operating current from either the battery or the charger. It is operated using four tactile switches, all of which have additional functions as you can see. The on-off button turns the relay on or off. The relay connects the battery to the load or charger. Normally the relay is off when power is applied to the module and you need to press the button to connect the battery to either load or charger, but this can be changed so the relay turns on automatically. The other buttons allow you to select what's displayed and to set up parameters. Also borrowed from their website for convenience, the top row shows what values you can display while charging. The charging direction is denoted by the word IN as charge is flowing into the battery. The display always shows the battery voltage, but it's possible to change the second line to see the current in amps, the power in watts, the percentage of the battery capacity charge, this is basically the amp hours accumulated in this charge versus the nominal battery capacity. For example, if the battery capacity was 10 amp hours and so far one amp hour has been flowing into the battery, then this would show 10%. Next, we have the remaining time again based on total capacity and calculated under the assumption that the current remains the same, followed by the accumulated capacity and accumulated energy. The display for discharging provides the same options. Finally, the six parameters that can or in case of the first one must be set. Cap, standing for battery capacity, is something you have to set or pretty much none of the readouts except voltage and current work properly. Followed by ELA which is optional and just makes the display flash if the remaining capacity drops below the stated threshold. Nothing else happens. Up can be set and will disengage the relay and thereby stop the charge if the battery voltage exceeds the stated number. If this function is not needed, set the number to zero. DN is the opposite. The unit disengages the relay and thereby stops further discharge if the battery voltage drops below the stated value. I could not get this to work at all until I found by chance that it only works if up is set to non-zero as well. It's a bug in the firmware, but it can be easily overcome by setting up to some high value. DNA is a way to stop a charge or discharge if the current is below a threshold and OAP is basically an overload protection that turns the relay off if the stated value, by default a current of 30 amps, is exceeded. The top side of the PCB contains the big items, namely the display, the switches, the relay and the terminal blocks. There are a few smaller components, an LED indicating the relay status, a few capacitors and transistors and what looks like a DC to DC converter. The underside is more interesting. There is an LCD driver chip and the microcontroller, an HK32F04A, which according to the Chinese datasheet is an ARM-based 32-bit microcontroller. The PCB has preparation for a programming connector and the connector at the bottom is a serial port according to the pinout of the microcontroller. I connected a scope to it, but it appears the port is not used by the firmware. Otherwise, we have a couple of beefy diodes and the current sensor, which is a CC6920BSOELC30A. It sits right between the battery and the load terminals and those double up pins obviously are meant to carry the current. Again, the only datasheet I managed to find is in Chinese, but it's clear that this is a Hall effect current sensor. The current just flows through the chip on a beefy track. 
This means there is practically no voltage drop as with the usual current shunts. I used the board to monitor a nickel metal hydrate battery pack that was at hand with an IMAX B6 charger, although that ZKJ30 is actually meant for lead acid batteries. This uncovered a few issues. First, although the charger is delivering 1.0 amps, the module shows only about 740 milliamps. This is because it uses the missing 260 milliamps for itself. In fact, almost all of it just keeps the relay in the on state, which explains why that relay gets pretty warm after a while. Secondly, and that's not the fault of the module, the IMAX B6 periodically turns the charge current off to check the battery state. When that happens, the module switches to discharge mode because now the module and the relay are powered by the very battery that I'm trying to charge. These unplanned discharges mess with the IMAX B6 charger, so it can't detect the true status of the battery, and it finally does an emergency stop when it reaches its safety timeout. Until then, it delivered 2043 milliamp hours. Okay, the module is meant for chargers that do not charge in pulses with battery checks in between, so I can't fault it for messing this charge up, but remember, even while the charger was actually charging normally, we had the wrong current readout on the module. All of which means the ZKJ30 recorded just 1585 milliamps of charge actually delivered, a significant shortfall from the 2043 the charger claims. More about that in a moment. On to discharge. It was running for a few seconds already, so the remaining capacity is now 1577 milliamp hours. Ignore the percentage because I set the total capacity to high. The discharge current is set to constant 1 amp on my electronic load, but to do that the module draws 1.3 amps from the battery. The extra is needed to keep itself powered up. The capacity is now 1562 milliamp hours and dropping, because when discharging the module actually counts backwards. This means when it reaches zero on the milliamp hours, it just stops counting. In fact, everything associated with capacity or energy or time is now just zero and stays that way until you start charging again. Initially that confused me because, as in this case, if the capacity up count was too low, the battery is not empty and still happily delivering current. To make it easier to understand what happens, let's look at this simplified case here. I assume a battery of 1000 milliamp hours that is completely empty and I want to charge it with 1 amp of constant current. To do that, the charger actually has to deliver 1.2 amps because the module will siphon off 0.2 amps for itself, passing only 1 amp to the battery. After 1 hour, the battery is full with 1000 milliamp hours, which the module shows correctly on the display, while the charger actually delivered 1200 milliamp hours to do the job. If I now connect the load that draws 1 amp constant current, the module will draw 1.2 amps from the battery, because it needs the extra 0.2 amps for itself. It shows this current correctly on the display. With a draw of 1.2 amps instead of 1 amp, a 1000 milliamp hour battery is empty after just 50 minutes. In that time, it delivered 1.2 amps times 50 minutes, which equals 1000 milliamp hours, and that's shown correctly on the module. The load, on the other hand, only receives 1 amp times 50 minutes, which equals to just 833 milliamp hours. This sounds like some serious accounting issues, but to be fair, this module is only concerned about the battery, not the load or the charger, and for the battery, it correctly counts the current it delivered during charge and the current it draws from the battery, even if that includes its own current. The current shown by the ZKJ30 is never the load or charger current, which is different. Also, the module is meant for bigger batteries and far more current. If the current is 10 amps instead of 1 amp, the 0.2 amps the module adds to the charger or steals from the load is just a 2% error and hardly noticeable. If you are more interested in the actual load current, you can zero out the current drawn by the module in discharge mode by pressing and holding the ON button for at least 10 seconds. In that case, the display will now show correctly what was delivered to the load, but of course not what was actually pulled from the battery, and this messes up the accounting on battery charge and discharge. Confused by all that? 
Maybe it becomes clearer with a simplified schematic showing what's really going on. The module uses a common negative rail. The positive battery terminal goes through the whole current sensor and then through the relay contact to the positive load charger terminal. The battery side and the load charger side each have a diode which feeds a common rail for the electronics and the power for the relay. The two diodes ensure that the module gets power regardless whether a battery or a charger or both are connected and regardless whether the relay contact is open or closed. On the battery side the diode is an M7, a normal rectifier diode, while on the low charger side the diode is an SS110, which is a Schottky type. The data sheets do not specify the actual forward voltage, only that the M7 is less than 1 volt and the Schottky less than 0.8 volts, but this difference is crucial in how the circuit works because of the lower drop the SS110 offers a slightly higher voltage to the electronics and therefore the operating current will be drawn through the Schottky diode whenever possible. In charge mode with a relay open, both the battery voltage and the charge voltage are available, but since the battery voltage is normally less than or at most equal to the charger voltage, the current flows through SS110. The module shows zero current because no current flows through the Hall effect current sensor. If the relay is closed, the current shown is the true charge current reaching the battery because the module current needed to power the electronics branches off through SS110 before reaching the current sensor, so it's not measured. When discharging, consider first the case that just the battery is connected without a load and the relay is open. In this case, the module's operating current flows through M7, but no current flows through the current sensor because of the open switch. The module shows zero current even though the battery is actually discharging, so if you keep this going for a long time, you will end up with a discharged battery even though the module will think it's still full. If the relay switch is closed, things change. Now the SS110 diode is available as a better path for the module current, so the current flow through M7 stops and instead goes through the current sensor to SS110 and from there into the module. This means the module now shows its own supply current on the display. If you keep this going for a long time, the battery will also be discharged, but now the module keeps track and you can see what's left on the display. This basically stays the same if a load is connected, except that now the load current is added. The battery now has to provide the load current and the module current and both are measured by the current sensor. How large is the current the module needs for its own supply? This depends on the voltage and whether the relay is on or off. In this test, the relay is off. The red meter shows the voltage and the yellow meter the current. Unsurprisingly, the current varies a lot with the voltage. With the relay on, which would be the normal mode of operation, the current is drastically increased but still highly depending on the voltage. The dependency is shown in this diagram. Ignore the spike on the left which is caused by using less than 6 volts. The module is only rated for 6 volts to 60 volts. Usually battery voltage changes quite a bit between completely full and all empty. This means the module's current is going to change as well and basically makes any attempt at zeroing only marginally effective. You can compensate for a specific current at a particular voltage, but that is going to change any value you pick to zero against is soon either overcompensating or not enough. But there is a better solution to get rid of the errors introduced by the module current. With a small change, the module can be powered from an external power source and that allows the current sensor to measure only the true charge and load currents. All it takes is adding another diode onto the rail which is connected to the external supply. I chose an 1N4007, which is exactly the same as an M7. Just adding the diode leaves the original design untouched and imposes a condition on the supply voltage in that the external voltage should be slightly higher than the highest VBAT or V charge. If that is fulfilled, the two original diodes will never conduct and therefore all module current is carried by the new diode. If the voltage is lower or no external power is provided, the circuit simply works as it did before. 
Of course, you can always remove the original M7 and SS110, and in that case, the external supply voltage can be fixed to anything from 6 volts onwards without a dependency on the battery or charge voltage. I soldered a red wire where the PCB tracks from the SS110 and M7 meet. This is connected to the largest electrolytic cap of 47 microfarad 63 volts, and the solder joint for the positive pin of this cap provides a convenient place to solder the wire to. To make this more stable, I glued a third terminal next to the battery terminal, which on the bottom has the new diode, and connects to the red wire. It looks very makeshift and I'm sure there are better solutions, but this works fine for now. Here's the changed module in action. The yellowish wire is providing a 15 volt supply to stay well above the up to 10 volts from the charger for this battery. The charge is already going for half an hour or so, and if you compare the milliamp hour counters of the charger and the module, they are still nearly in sync, well within tolerances of the current measurement accuracy of both charger and module. This works far better than before and even handles the pulse charging of the IMAX B6. It allowed the charger to properly detect the battery full condition with 2777 mAh added, which is nearly identical to the 2759 counted by the module. I like that the ZK J30 has such a wide current and voltage range, making it suitable for many batteries 6 volts and above. It has good accuracy in its measurements and does not induce a voltage drop because of a shunt resistor. The availability to set safety thresholds is great, but do test them first to make sure they work. This is how I found the bug that the low voltage threshold was not working until a high threshold was set as well. The ZKJ30 has the same issue as many USB testers in that its own consumption influences the measurements. For large batteries and high currents, the error is small, but it's quite large for batteries operating in the 1 to 2 amp range. With a mod this can be eliminated, but now you need an external supply. Or one has to simply lift with it. It does count the charge in and out of the battery correct, but it may look confusing because of the extra current shown through the discharge. Because it counts backwards during the discharge, you have to get the capacity right to get reasonably accurate battery capacity percentage values. The total capacity isn't constant as batteries age and also depends on many other things, like temperature and so on. The total value needs frequent tweaking even in a permanent installation. Luckily the ZKJ30 has shortcuts where one can simply set the result of the charge as 100% capacity or clear any erroneously left capacity when the battery is actually empty but the ZKJ30 still shows some remaining capacity. Lastly, the relay is powered on during the whole charge or discharge period and gets quite warm. You are not exactly burning your fingers, but it's very noticeable. I admit at the beginning that ZKJ30 was very frustrating to work with, but after I learned its quirks and understood how it works, it all makes sense and I would like to thank IC Station for sending it in. If you are on the lookout for a charge monitor, the ZKJ30 is definitely worth a closer look. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. There are many more projects, repairs and reviews coming up. And it would be great if you decided becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. Thanks for watching.